I am on my way to work this morning, and who is at the donut shop? About 20 guys on Harleys, black leather jackets, motorcycle club, patches and such, chains, tons of chrome everywhere, and they look like they're going somewhere. And I say to one of the guys, uh, nice group of bikes you got there. I say, oh, thanks. We just came down from New York. We're going to meet a bunch of guys in Philly, and then we're going to go up to Port Jervis, Jarvis, Port Jervis, New York, right up the Delaware River. And it's kind of exciting to see that camaraderie and such and how everybody was excited. They were getting their coffee, getting ready to go on this excursion. And uh, uh, the guy that I was talking to was the leader. And I said, will you be safe today? Have a great day. And I hope to see you guys down here again sometime. That would be great. And, you know, we did a little fist bump kind of thing. And as I was driving out, I was looking at all the bikes. I'm like, really nice, nice. I like that seat, man. You know, and guys were giving me thumbs up. And I said, hey, you guys just have a great time today. Be safe. Have a lot of fun. We got a perfect day today. And they're all just like giving me the fist. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. It was kind of funny. But here's one thing I didn't tell you. They were all black guys that came down from New York that belonged to a motorcycle club. They were, for lack of a better term, a V-twin club. So they were all Harleys. And I said to the guy, go, oh, the, it looks like you got the V-twin club down here today. And they all started laughing. But what was fascinating was that it did not occur to me for one second that it was 20 black guys at the donut shop that came down from New York that were talking different than me and such. And the bond, the bridge between us was our love for motorcycles and camaraderie while we're driving. There was no differences whatsoever. You love motorcycles, you are a brother. Simple as that. So zero differences were talked about. It was just pure appreciation for the engines, the bikes, the seats, and just the amount of guys, it was fantastic. And it really occurred to me that the leaders in the world, not just the United States, they want to divide us. They don't want us to be unified. Unity is the biggest threat for most leadership at the state, national, and global level. Globalists do not want you to have unity. They want to divide us. We just spent the last two years getting divided between the got the and didn't get the those who believe it's going to be a dangerous thing and those who believe it was a, an act of war. I mean, it just literally divided us right down the middle as a nation, politically and such. It's, it's crazy. And what's happening is that globalist leaders are just going, yes, 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 it worked. No, it's not working. It's not working. When it comes to men, you take 20 men and you put them in a men's organization, a group of men, a men's movement, and within six months, they're hammering each other, slamming each other, calling each other names, dividing into factions. That's when you put men together and talk about philosophical and existential threats, such as feminism and things like that. You put 20, 20 men on motorcycles and they get along. You put 20 men in a cigar lounge with cigars and pipes, and they're getting along. And the differences are not there. Unity is the biggest enemy of globalism and of your government. Our government is great at dividing us. The globalists are great at dividing us. They did a good job of it for the past two years, if you know what I'm talking about. And I think if we can seek things that are common, especially when it comes to men, Men need to revolve around projects, not philosophies, and not existentialism. We need to revolve around common likes and interests and not invisible boogeymen. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but today I saw 20 bikers, and I gave them a blessing. Have a great day. It's a beautiful day. I hope I see you again. And they all came over and were fist bumping me. The leader came over, shook my hand. It was a good morning, and I was excited about that. What can we do in our lives in order to have unity in the men's community? Don't join any men's communities at all. If they are not revolving around doing something, 
if they're not revolving around motorcycles or a common activity. I just had a great talk with a client about how I love wood. Whenever I see a downed piece of wood, you know, there's the type of guy that looks at the wood and says, ah, oh, firewood, or looks at a big log and says, oh, that would heat my home all winter long. And then there's the kind of guy that says, hmm, me, I wonder what I could make out of that. Or when I see a big, you know, diameter log, I think about slicing it. I'm like, oh, that would make five nice live edge tables. Men coming together around a project to complete something where there actually is a finished physical product. Men working on a motorcycle together. Men building a house together. Men putting on a roof. Men doing landscaping work. Men volunteering somewhere in the community. Men serving each other in a church. Uh, a men's breakfast. Men doing things together. Revolving around things, activities, hobbies, rather than existential and invisible threats. If you are getting together with men, let it be around something. Let it be around the five mile walk, the bike ride, the motorcycle ride, the common hobbies that you have, the band that you're gonna go see, the types of bourbon that you drink. 10 guys get together, each guy brings a different type of bourbon. It can be done. There is hope for the men's community if we are unified. As long as men keep hammering men, then there's not going to be any unity at all. So be a unifier, whoever you are, and I wish the best for you. We got this, man. We got this. They're going to push things that will divide people, that they will forget about maybe 99% that they agree on and but they're gonna just argue about this one percent and they're gonna like go above and beyond and and kind of fight and whatever just about this one percent and that's i think that's that's basically what it's about i've noticed that that you know people disagree with one thing and they can go ballistics like in family feuds and everything It's horrible. It's horrible. But this is what, what they are doing to us in, in a society. They want us divided because it's just easier. Because if people would come together, you know, they, we, that would be a, a force to reckon with. They would be strong and the government would have to be afraid. And if they have everybody divided, they, don't, they are not afraid because they know that people will not u unite. Because imagine, like, even there is an issue with government and... Um, you know, some certain things and Democrats and Republicans would unite. Or even I can think, I cannot think in Poland that this party and this party will unite. Like the, the people who normally vote for those parties, they unite about certain issue that they, they know that the government is doing bad. So, yeah, no, no unity. That's that's what it is, and this is racial stuff in the states. Obviously, it's very strong, so it's gonna be ignited even more. I mean, you know, there are people who are racist and who will always look through the color of somebody's skin and blah. and yes, they you know with this social politics and everything, they 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 keep you divided. So, yeah.